Good morning, warm welcome, Sage here for Kalkine TV, reporting to you live from Sydney, and you're watching the Global Markets Roundup. Let's dive into some of the key highlights and happenings from yesterday, starting with the US market. A gauge of global stock markets edged lower and the dollar built on earlier gains on Wednesday after the US consumer inflation surged to its highest since 1990, raising concerns the Federal Reserve will tighten the monetary policy sooner than expected. And the MSCI's all-country world index slid 0.21%, while the broad pan-European FTS Euro First 300 index rose 0.28%. And the benchmark U.S. indices closed in the red on Wednesday, 10th November, after the latest economic data showed inflation rose at an annualised rate of 6.2% last month, the highest increase in 30 years, and the S&P 500 was down 0.82%. The Dow Jones fell 1.01% and the Nasdaq Composite fell 1.66%, as well as the small cap Russell 2000 was down 1.52%. The consumer price index rose 6.2% year-on-year in October and inflation remained above 5% for the fifth consecutive month, fueled by demand and tight supplies, the Labor Department said on Wednesday. And the core price index rose 4.6% from a year earlier and the monthly CPI rose to a seasonally adjusted 0.9% in October from the previous month. The department said the high energy cost, rentals, healthcare, automobiles and furniture pushed the CPI up. And on Wednesday, consumer staples, healthcare and utility stocks were the top gainers on the S&P 500 index, while technology, consumer discretionary and energy stocks were the hardest hit. Only three of the index's 11 segments remained in the green. And now it's time for a small break, but stay tuned as I'll be back with the UK and Australian market updates. Hi there, James Preston for Kalkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Welcome back, Sage here. You're watching the Global Markets Roundup show by Kalkine TV. And the European stocks closed at a record high on Wednesday following strong earnings from the media and energy sectors, while technology stocks fell as fears of increased competition weighed on popular online food delivery companies. And the pan-European stock 600 was up 0.2%, with media and energy stocks among the top gainers. And the British broadcaster ITV surged 15.1%. After its forecast record high advertising revenue this year, and the London equities strengthened on Wednesday as the trading progressed with the domestic benchmark FTSE 100 nearing its 20-month high. Investors are keenly awaiting the preliminary estimates for the third quarter GDP growth scheduled to be released on Thursday. And shares of ITV emerged as the lead gainers among the 101 components of the headline index, rising as much as 14% after the London headquartered media corporation provided a better outlook while announcing the July to September quarter financial results. And the blue chip shares of AstraZeneca, Reckitt, Benk, Benkiser, GlaxoSmithKline, Lloyds Banking Group, Diageo, National Grid and Barclays thoroughly supported the index. The FTSE 100 advanced 0.63%, whereas the mid-cap reflector FTSE 250 rose 0.38%. And the Japanese shares ended lower on Wednesday as the fallout from rising costs of raw materials weighed on a raft of earnings results and sapped risk sentiment. The Nikkei average closed 0.61% lower, extending losses for a fourth straight session, while the broader topics lost 0.54%. And China's stocks closed lower on Wednesday after data showed factory gate prices in the world's second largest economy rose at the fastest pace in 26 years last month, reducing the chances of a policy rate cut by the central bank in the near term. 
And the blue chip CSI 300 index was down 0.5 percent, while the Shanghai Composite Index lost 0.4 percent. South Korean shares hit their lowest close in a month on Wednesday as the major tech heavyweights tracked a sharp decline in Tesla Inc. And as inflation data from China stoked fears of policy tightening. The benchmark KOSPI ended down 1.09 percent, marking the lowest close since October 12th. And the Australian share market may fall on Thursday after weak overnight performance by U.S. equities following the highest U.S. inflation data in the last three decades, which seems to have raised concerns among investors and caused a surge in bond yields. The latest inflation reading has raised concerns that the U.S. Federal Reserve will tighten monetary policy earlier than expected. And the ASX 200 benchmark fell 0.14 percent on Wednesday. A number of ASX 200 companies including BHP Group, Breville Group, Nearmap and Nine Entertainment Co-Holdings are holding their annual general meetings on Thursday. And let's take a look now at the commodities market. And the real yields on the U.S. Treasury slid to record lows after inflation data and the dollar index rose 0.83 percent. The euro fell 0.89 percent while the yen gained 0.82 percent. And oil prices fall. Oil prices fell after traders sold oil on U.S. crude inventories rose by one million barrels in the most recent week. Brent crude fell to U.S. dollars 14 cents to settle at 84 U.S. dollars 64 cents a barrel and U.S. crude lost $2.81 to settle at $81.34 U.S. Dollars 34 cents a barrel. And the gold prices rise. Gold prices reportedly surged after traders bought gold despite the higher than expected U.S. inflation data and rising bond yields. Gold prices hit a five-month high. And the U.S. gold futures settled 1% higher. Delhi and iron ore futures hit a one-year low on Wednesday as demand worries intensified due to China's curbs on its steel output. The most traded January iron ore contract on the Dalian Commodity Exchange, 4.6% lower. And meanwhile, Bitcoin hit another record high and was last flirting with the 69,000 US dollar level for the first time after inflation data. And now for the newsmakers. Nearmap said it expects its annual contract value to end the financial year 2022 at least 12% higher than its 2021 financial year results. And Orica reported a net loss after tax of 174 million Australian dollars for the year ending 30th September 2021. Ramsey Healthcare's revenue rose 1.3% higher to reach 3.2 billion Australian dollars in the September quarter from a year earlier. However, the earnings reported a steep fall. And thank you for your company on the report. That's all for now. Keep watching Calcane TV for more of the market updates. Sage here signing off.